What we're uh, going to show you by video is uh, a video record of a seminar we ran for a diverse group of students uh, and captured it to videotape. The idea was to uh, stress to the viewers just uh, how much could be done for the moderately trained person. And that moderately trained person could be either a duty person or it could be a person who you know, is concerned about his personal safety uh, or whatever. This group that you will see through training in the uh, seminar is very, very diverse. We had everything from a shiatsu uh, masseuse to a federal agent to a lawyer to a food services uh, vice president um, uh, to a black belt editor, uh, everybody uh, in between. Um, because of that, it's important that you understand that the speeds, the standards, the times that we're trying to get them to, the levels of accuracy, was all accomplished within five days. Some people came having already been fairly uh, proficient with their handgun uh, and having never done any combative skills. Other people came having been proficient at martial arts, perhaps, uh, but not proficient uh, you know, with pistol, so vice versa. Uh, one student was a very accomplished Taekwondo uh, martial artist, but then felt very inadequate when we had the street representations of violence and actually went through the process of identifying what we know to be the truth about confrontations on the street. Uh, the importance of all of this shouldn't be lost on you because, again, I've said this many, many times, people are always looking for a secret answer or a magic button, the next high-speed thing. High-speed is doing the fundamentals exceptionally well, and that will never change. If you look at the whole man training concept and you say that you want to be a more proficient person, you can't engage in any kind of talk like, well, I don't need to know anything about combatives, I know gun fu. That's kind of ridiculous because, again, it goes to I don't have any other option but to brandish my pistol or brandish my firearm when that would be wholly inappropriate. Uh, sometimes people say, well, you know, I don't need any firearms because, you know, I've got good hand skills. First, you've got to validate your hand skills, do you really, in relationship to what goes on in the street? Or uh, are you just saying that I don't need anything at, at range? What if it's a lethal attack? What if it's a projectile uh, weapon and I've got to deal with that and I don't have the ability to get close to this person to do some kind of uh, contrived uh, weapons disarm. So again, uh, it's a very, very abrupt, brusque, realistic approach. Um, also, people more and more seem to have a tendency to want to convert people who believe in things. You know, I've had people want to convert the way I do things or the way we've thought uh, through and validated through life experience and other ways uh, what we do. I'm not interested in being converted any more than I'm interested in converting you. You have to come to it yourself. Uh, as I said, and will say again and again, nobody does anything because they think it's stupid, me included, and my staff and everything. You don't do anything because you think it's stupid. Um, so uh, the truth is also, however, that most people don't know what they don't know. And there are, they're victims of their own experience. Some people are victims of their own experience having had no experience or having had only one experience and not having been able to you know, put it against a backdrop of what's out there. And lastly, changing opinion. Uh, I don't effort to change your opinion. You know, if you choose to emulate what we do and what you see and if it makes sense and logical sense, then you adopt it into your personal regimen. If you don't, that's your business. Uh, any footage that you see uh, here is hopefully new to you. We didn't include footage that's been on other videotapes, the stick series, the uh, self-offense series, uh, the combative skills series, because, you know, I'm not going to waste your money. I don't want you to buy something to see repetitive the same old things. Like I said, I mean, uh, I think that's a cheap marketing ploy, and I'm not going to engage in that. So, again, I think you'll find that this is very fresh and uh, a, a different look at people just like you going through a program that, quote, unquote, high speed. Not, but it's uh, standard training. Uh, my background, uh, basically, uh, as a Marine Corps uh, officer, started in uh, 1980. I was an infantry officer who had previous experience in uh, high-risk techniques with police departments. And when the Marine Corps started their special operations training groups, I was selected by General Gray uh, to start a uh, special operations training group in, in 3MEF, uh, 3 Marine uh, Expeditionary Force. Uh, from there, I went to England, spent some time with uh, some British units. After that, went to a place called SOLIC, the Special Operations Low Intensity Conflict Center at the Warfighting Center in Quantico, uh, with the idea to standardize all CQB and CQC tactics, techniques, procedures, equipment, et cetera, throughout the Marine Corps. Uh, after that, um, I was the Marine Corps' counter-narcotics officer for uh, some time and the Marine Corps' uh, counter-terrorism officer for some time. Following that, I resigned my commission. I worked for a civilian vendor 
who was uh, engaged in uh, teaching the government uh, different high-risk um, environment uh, tactics, techniques and procedures. Uh, after that, I started my own business and have basically uh, been able to travel to somewhere around 45, 47 countries and engaged in operational uh, kind of events for the U.S. government and uh, for the military as well as do off-site training, go to those places to train people. Uh, some of the footage you'll see we've clipped in here for you to take a look at. So again, you know, uh, I am also a victim of my own experience, and, uh, but at least I've had some. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to benefit from that. Enjoy the tape. Um, the combative shooting, some of the stuff we'll be doing later on, is probably one of the most brutal things that we teach, and that's going to be for the most extreme circumstances. Um, basically, those are going to be preemptive strikes uh, on an assaultive behavior cue, where you've seen the weapon, it's been displayed, uh, you have reason to believe that this is absolutely going to go lethal, or you need a chance to detach and then assess. And then you can either engage or disengage. So if I see you at close range, you got a hand that you will not show me, but you won't get out of my way either. You've got me stuck here. All right, well, if I preemptively strike you, draw my weapon, and then put it out, now I've got my weapon out against yours, and now I can either assess or see what you do. If you run at me through this, well, I guess the choice is clear with your knife, but most people won't. And then again, we got a chance to control the situation. You know what I'm saying? It happens that fast, you know? But it's not an automaton where I'm going to stroke you and then bang, shoot you just because. You can't do that. That's murder, okay? It's all about assessment. It's all about being able to engage with the ultimate goal of escaping if you're just a civilian. And if you're a duty-bound person, then engaging if you need to or giving verbal commands and take control of the situation. But it is uh, a very, very hard thing. Always seek and escape, uh, always observing the potential threat, looking at cues, and we'll be talking about that stuff all week this week. In the imminent observed lethal threat, well, you know what? I hate to tell you, but sometimes you're just going to have to go for it. And what I mean by that is I see the knife in your hand. You know, you're standing right in front of me. You're a little bit nervous. You give me all the cues, and I know you're going to stick me in the gut. I mean, I know it. You won't let me pass. Well, you know what? Mm, I'm just going to have to get after it. The bottom line is, is that you'll always hear things like colloquialisms. Um, well, you always want to use your firearms against a guy with a knife. Yeah? When? Because as you're going to learn here, we don't do pillar assaults. We don't do knife techniques where a guy, you know, moves the knife like this and you have a chance to do this stuff. It ain't real, you know? Real knife, and it's gone. It's just, you know, all these techniques, X boxes and turn. Where's your opportunity to do it? The hand's not there anymore. And now, guess what? It's coming back again and again and again. And that's where the role of traditional training starts breaking down so rapidly. Okay? So we don't want to go there. Okay? We want to keep this thing real. going to do is uh, basically work a uh, one-handed draw first and we'll kind of just work the line back until and I want to work up through some reloads and a couple of simple malfunctions and two-hand presentation just kind of get you in the mode okay um, you can now go ahead and just face the wall point the weapon at 45 degree direction and load if you have not already your safety rounds all I did was pinch the slide and pull it slightly back good now you see it and only go forward there you go put it back in the holster Firearms, in our opinion, will give you the kind of a quick safety dump is real simple. It can be in your holster. It can be in a low ready like this. It can be on target, and that's all it can be. It can't be in the air. It can't be pointing at your head. It can't be pointing at your partner's head. Okay? It can't be pointing at me when I turn. Okay? It's in the holster. It's at a 45 degree angle in a low ready, or it's on target and ready to shoot, period. Trigger fingers. Trigger fingers only go in the trigger guard when you are ready to shoot. They don't go in there when you're manipulating. You don't forget about it. You don't uh, just go, well, geez, I didn't even think. Think. Okay? Your trigger finger stays straight along the side of the frame just like this unless you are ready to shoot. If you're ready to shoot, your target area is clear and you can press it out, then your finger can be in the trigger. Other than that, it comes off 
and then boom, you're very careful about how you handle the gun with the trigger. Okay? You are your own safety officer. Yes, we're the range safety officers, but you have the personal responsibility to keep yourself safe, the shooters to the left of right of you safe, and me safe. Okay? Because I can't, no man, no human can move fast enough to intercede the speed at which that gun can go off. No man. So it's on you to think. Go only as fast in any of these drills as you feel comfortable with. Okay? If you don't feel comfortable picking up the pace, don't. That's what training's for. It's to get comfortable. So if you see your partners left and right going fast, so what? You know? Be okay with being the last man to shoot. Doesn't matter. You don't have to be the first man to shoot. You don't also have to be concerned about being the last man to let your firearm go off. Who cares? It's free here. No one's shooting back. Okay, so you be your own safety officer. We will also supervise that, but you have the personal responsibility to keep others safe on the range as well, okay? All we're gonna do now is, I want you to move up here on your targets, okay? And I want you to, we're gonna do what we call a guard draw, okay? And basically the guard draw is, happens at contact distances like this. So I'm this close to my target, all right? I, I'm, what I have to do is initially fend, and so it's a guard. I know my strong hand is where the gun is, and all we're going to do is fend, and then if you look at how I'm bringing the gun back to bear, it's this, okay? It's very close, tight maneuver. Fend, <clears throat> okay? Just like he had a knife and was going to slam down into me. <clears throat> oh! That's reality, okay, at close ranges. What do you think? I'm going to step back and have a full presentation? Ain't happening, man. At that moment, you're either going to get it in your hand and stop this thing or not. And you're probably going to get hit or whatever, but the idea is quick action. So we'll start slow, and we'll do it in two steps, okay? We'll guard and fend, guard and fend, three-finger grip. And then when I say, okay, gun, all I, I say guard and fend, do this. Then I say gun, all I want you to do is this. That's it, okay? So stand in here, guard and fend, boom, that's it. That's all I want you to do. I want you to be very conscious of where the muzzle is. Robbie, stand here. Notice I'm not doing this. You'll see that? That's called muzzle flash. And what I did was, I'm, I'm tense, I'm excited, I'm nervous, I'm scared. He's starting to go off on me. The idea that I could have a sympathetic muscle tightening negligent discharge should be very real in your mind. So the trigger finger's got to be taken into account, and all of my muzzle directions have to be taken into account. That is unacceptable, okay? You always draw straight to the target, straight to the target. You don't need a lot of movement. You don't need to endanger anybody else, okay? So go ahead, stand in front of the target. All right, now, very easily, take your time, just relax. All I want you to do is go ahead and move to a guard and fend. Three-finger grip on the weapon and throw that arm up and guard yourself and hold. A good, deep three-finger grip, okay? Always go back to decock. Okay, I didn't tell you to pull a gun out, man. Listen to what I'm saying. Put the gun back in the holster. Everyone else is good to go. Guys, listen up. Guard and fend means just that. It means hand comes up and three-finger grip, stop. Okay, when I say gun, I want you to go ahead and just sway your hips and bring the weapon right back to bear in the center section. Stand by, gun. That's it. Nicely done. Okay, and back to the holster. Good. Go back to decock. Okay. Same thing, stand by, put your hands up, just like we said in a number four position, they're right up in front of you, show them your palms, calm them down, guard and fend. Gun. Okay, too much movement, drop your elbows when you didn't need to, Lyle, okay? Always look at the direction of the weapon to your elbow, your own weapon, elbow. Okay, back to the holster. All right, Jack Benny, go ahead, start in position number three. Your weak hand is along your stomach, your strong hand is under your chin. You're just standing here kind of looking at him, okay? Considering him. Guard and fend. Gun. Okay, don't look at me, man. Don't look at me. I, ain't nothing me behind you I is going to be doing. Up. I'll be watching what I need to watch, okay? You worry about your firearm and a badass. Okay, back to the holster. Okay, starting position number two. Arms folded across the chest, strong arm forward for an axe hand. Just standing there looking at him. It's unencumbered. Guard and fend. Gun. Good. Okay. Now stop. Look at your guard. Where's your elbow? Do you have a good box going? Could you block or fend something? Think about it. And back to the holster. Okay. One more time. Starting position number one. Hands folded across the crotch. Just stand there like this, kind of subservient. Doesn't matter because they're both going to move. Okay. 
Stand by, and garden fend, gun. That's all right, man, don't get frustrated. Be, best thing about shooting, this is a lesson you need to take away, we're our own worst enemy. If you tell yourself you screwed up, then you're doing negative learning, man. All you gotta do is say, hey, that wasn't bad, I could do better, but that wasn't bad, okay? Always do a lot of uh, positive self-talk. Back to the holsters. Take a step forward. I want you inside your target. Starting position number three, Jack Benny. Garden fend. Gun! And back to the holster. Starting position number four, hands up. Hands up, looking at him, calm this guy out. What the fuck's he all about? Hands up in front of you. Show him your palms. Show him your palms. Garden fend. Gun! All right, good. Weapons back. Nicely done. And to the holster. Excellent. Okay, now what we're going to do is I want you staying exactly where you are, and what I want you to do is reach forward. If you would step back, Robbie. All I want you to do is this. Now what we're going to do is from here, we're going to do a face smash instead of a garden fend. See this? And then when we produce the gun, we're just going to clear the gun area. Bang. See the movement of my feet? So now all I'm doing is this. I'm here. So my initial garden fend is what? A strike to the face. And then all I'm going to do when he gets that, whoa, then I'm going to produce my gun, boom, and I'm going to shoot from the weapons retention position. As Dave's been correcting you, why don't you think I want to do this? Yeah, he can avert the muzzle and get inside my loop. So if I'm holding it back tight like this, no problem, man. He's got to go through the gun to keep me from shooting. Okay, so two count movement. This time when I say, gar or, uh, this time I'll say face mash, and then I'll say gun, just to keep it simple. So face mash, go to the gun here, and then gun, bang. And, and this is exactly what I want you to do, is just clear this area of your body and shoot right from here. Okay, at these distances, do you need your sights? No, man. I mean, you know, if, if you're missing at this distance, it's because your wrist is at the wrong angle, you're failing to have good lockup, etc. Okay, so you're going to be right on top of your target. Everybody understand the drill? Simple. Okay, get inside your target's loop. Stand by. Nice and easy. You don't need to be knocking the heads off these targets, okay, because uh, some of them are on very tight, some of them are not. Face smash. Gun. Ah, ah, ah. Get out of the way. Clear the gun area. There you go. That's it. Good. Nicely done. Okay, back to the holster. And back up on your target. There you go. In quartada. Open that gate. Stand by. Hands up. Position number four. Palms out. Talk to this guy. Face smash. Gun! All right, back to the holster. All right, same thing. Get inside his loop. Get right close, okay? Same drill. Stand by. Think about what you're doing, Jack Benny. Starting position number three. Number three, Jack Benny. Face smash. Gun! Okay, and back to the holster. Where do we want our hand... Where do we want our hand? Pistons, right? Out, bang, Tra change points. Just like pistons, one, two, one, two. Guys, look up here. If I face mash a guy, he goes away. So if I go bam like this, he's suddenly not there. So I'm not gonna be able to be touching him. I'm just gonna go bang, boom, and sh but the idea is rapidity. Hit, shoot, hit, shoot. He's got a knife, a stick, a gun, or something lethal. That's why you're shooting him. Now, if we didn't shoot, what about that? Can we just automatically assume that we can face mash and shoot? No, no, no. So now what we're going to do is we're going to face mash. We're going to go gun, assess, step back, and press out. Follow me? Standing here, we're inside the loop. Face mash, gun, assess, press out, and back away. Don't shoot. In other words, you pushed him back, he dropped what he had in his hand. You don't know. Did you assess right, wrong, what's going on? But you cannot autom automatically shoot. Everybody clear on this? Think it's through, go slow. Okay, face mash. Gun. Step back, both arms press out, assess. There you go. And holster. And back up inside your target's loop. Same thing. Inside your target's loop. Face mash, gun, two steps back and press out. Look at him, look at him. That's it. And back to the holster. OK, 
Okay, the minute you go to two-handed shooting, what should you be looking at? Your grip, right? Are your thumbs crossed? Or do you have the right grip? Are your leading thumbs out like this? Or are you crossing them? Or is it cocked up? You have to be the guy that corrects it when you look at your hands. Okay, now what we're going to do is something a little bit different. Now we're going to do what we call a flint shoot. And a flint shoot is nothing more. We're going to stand here like this, okay, maybe a three quarters to our target. So he's looking at, or she's looking at me in this case right here. I got a three quarter angle look. And all we're going to do is basically strong side because there is no fending or whatever based on my situation here. The fastest thing that I'm going to be able to do is snatch the gun and basically get a shot off. I don't have any choice. What am I going to clear with? How do I do that? I can't. So what I got to do is get that three finger grip and whoa, it's called a flint shot and it is going to go off that fast. When we do it live fire down there, it's going to be literally bang because I just caught the gun, man. I mean, I was kind of in mental condition white. All of a sudden you see it. What's your alternative? What are you going to do? Knife's out. You want to do this chainsaw bit or you want to, whoa, I'd rather do that if it's a lethal threat. Follow me? Quarter turn away, stand by. All I'm going to do is say gun, and I want you to respond that way. Okay, stand by. Gun. Okay, step back a little bit. It would be natural for you to get a little bit of distance, right? Especially if they're swinging something at you, like an edged uh, weapon or something like that. Yeah, just take a little bit of a step. Okay, shield your body. Let the gun protect you. Back into the holster and step in. 45 degree angle. Stand by. Hands up in a starting position number four. I tell you what, bend down, touch your toes. Gun! You'll always be attacking conditions that are most advantageous to your attacker and least advantageous to you. Back to the holster. Gun! And back to the holster. Okay, 45 degree angle. Stand by. Starting position is up to you. You know the four of them. Gun! That's it. Good. And back to the holster. Interestingly enough, we take people, we take simunition, we line them all up, we make them face away. You shoot everybody in the back of the calf, okay? So boom, boom, boom. Everyone goes, oh, God, ah, man, because it comes out at a fairly high rate of speed. Put one weapon in one guy's hand, one weapon in another guy's hand, go to the holster. Say, okay, guys, I'm going to blow the whistle. I want you to draw and shoot at each other. You know what it looks like? Oh, oh, ah. You don't see, like, you don't see that shit, and that's with paint. Okay, so the human reaction of the moderately trained man who isn't in this game all the time, what do you think you're going to do? You think you're going to do an Ipsic square, you know, zinc oxide and Oakley's? No, man, it's going to be messy, ugly, fuck, you know, and that's okay as long as you're hitting and he's not, <laughs> you know, because we're practicing and he's not, you know. <laughs> okay, so stand by, 45 degree angle to your target. Remember, I want you to shoot from a linear position, okay? Done. That's it, that's it. And back to the holster. Gun. Nicely done. And back to the holster. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do a one hand draw and shoot. Now, it's your choice whether or not you want to just uh, do the starting position I'm talking about and draw one hand and, sh and press out, see the gun in front of your face. At three yards, this is point shooting. All I want you to do is lock your wrist lock your elbow, lock your shoulder. Now there's great debate about do I pump handle and bring it up? Is it centered on my body or do I just bring it up like this? I'm telling you what we want to do is stuff the gun in front of your face like this, lock wrist, lock elbow, lock shoulder. That's all you got to worry about. I'm not asking you to do anything else. I'm not asking you to do this where you center it on your face. I'm asking you literally to just take it out and point. Just like that, lock, 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 okay? Very simple. You can do it standing static or you can take a step with this. If you're more comfortable with it, you can take a step and step in with a step like this. I have a tendency to do that. Why do you think I have a tendency to do that? Weapon towards the target. Weapon towards the target, it's aggressive. If it's that, I'm gonna get shot moving backwards just as fast as I am gonna go forward. And if I go forward, it's probably more likely to scare them. So I mean, go big or go home. At this point, it's like, boy, I mean, you ask for it, give it to him, feed him that muzzle. Okay, up to you. Try it static and try it with a step forward. But I want you to end up looking at your target, cognizant of where the weapon is, but locked wrist, locked elbow, locked shoulder. Okay, stand by.
Starting position number one, hands folded across the crotch. Gun. And back to the holster. Number two, strong arm on top of the folded arms. Strong arm on top of the folded arms. Gun. And back to the holster. Jack Benny, weak arm across the stomach, strong arm under the chin. Gun. Good. And back to the holster. Now, when you look at the target, I don't want you to like take the whole target in. I want you to see a specific point on that target. Point shooting in, in the current lingo today, they say it is not sighted, but it is aimed. Well, if you're just looking at a, at a blob and you're not aware of where the gun is, are you doing anything? No. Okay, look at a specific point. So if I put this out there, I'm going to look right here at this dimple. You know what I'm saying? There's got to be a point of reference for you. It can't just be the chest. It has to be where on the chest. I mean, you're still concentrating, and you're still putting it in a particular place. Okay? Try a couple more static, and then I want you to move forward with the uh, foot and actually get aggressive. Stand by. Starting position number four. Hands up in front of you. Show me your palms. Gun! And back to the holster. Bend down, touch your toes. Gun! Back to the holster. Face to your left. Face to your left. Face to your left. Touch your toes. Gun! Anything change? It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. When the weapon comes out of the holster, it's all the same. Back to the, back to the holster. Okay, now go ahead and face your target. Starting position number one, hands folded across the crotch. I want an aggressive step forward, an aggressive step forward with the gun side, with the strong side. Gun! There you go. Okay, and back to the holster. You're going to find that activity on the range increases, so does your inattentiveness, okay, for some reason. Uh, make sure that you stay focused and attentive. Any movement doesn't count. Movement like this doesn't count. You know, this yeah, it doesn't count. None of that counts. It all stops when you clear leather. When you clear leather, it's just from the waist up, putting them where they count. Everything else is bullshit. I could have you face away. I could have you scratch your head, scratch your ass. It's all eyewash. <clears throat> Doesn't matter. As soon as you get your assault cue, boom, that's the only thing that matters. You know what to do, OK? All right, stand by. Starting position number three, Jack Benny. Gun. Nicely done. Stay focused. Don't break your attention. And back to the holster. No mental size. Don't look for peer approval. Don't look for my approval, because you ain't going to get it, OK? You're just doing what we do for work. So I'm not going to say, good job, good job, unless you do something truly outstanding. Otherwise, you know, hey, say, that was a good one. I felt good, blah, blah, blah. And we'll give you general corrections, OK? But pay attention to what you're doing. Stand by. Starting position number four, palms outward. Look at this shithead. Gun. Nicely done. And back to the holster. Gun! It ain't over till it's over. Back to the holster. Face to your right. Hands on hips. Gun! Muzzle flash, John. Almost every one of you muzzle flashed Christian. Remember, straight to the target, right? We don't want to draw the weapon and then bring it around. Even if I'm facing this way, turn, present, straight to the target. Got it? OK, and back to the holster. And face to your right. Starting position number three, Jack Benny. Look at your target. Just turn your head. Gun! Much better, much better. See, when I give you the focus and you can look at the target, it's natural. to do with a two-handed draw is basically do the same kind of aggressive movement. The only difference is it comes straight up and out. So all we're doing is both hands move at the same time. One to my center chest. I like to point my thumb, but sometimes I catch myself on video not so much doing that. But as long as it's near the gun, in other words, I don't want to be doing this. 
and getting the package together out here somewhere. I want to move it at the same time, so both hands move close to the gun. The strong hand comes in, gets a three finger grip deep and hard on the weapon, thumb stays flagged. And I'm going to bring it straight up and as soon as it gets up around here to my pectoral muscle, without dropping my elbow, I'm going to turn it. Because if the guy's running at me, I could start shooting now. Okay? So it doesn't matter. All I've got to do is clear the holster, bang, and if I have to do that, I can. All right? Once it's here, the package comes together just off the chest, just off the chest. Finger slides into trigger guard, sight, looking at the sight, pressing the trigger, bang, and it goes off just short of full extension. It's fast to the gun, fast to the index point, smooth press to the, to the uh, target. Okay? Now, let's not kid each other. We pull triggers. We don't press them. I've never pressed a button backwards in my life, and I've got to get rid of that in my vocabulary because I keep saying press the trigger. It, you pull the freaking trigger. The trick is, is to pull it without upsetting the alignment. So you don't want to push it like this where it actually turns a little bit in your hand, and you don't want to pull it towards you like this. You just want to pull straight to the rear. That's all. You know, very simply straight to the rear, okay? But you do pull a trigger. You don't press it. Okay. Um, all we're going to do then is basically start off and start in position four like this, and we're just going to do a nice easy by the numbers. One, two, three, four. Okay. This is about rhythm, and all I want you to do is you must promise me that after we rest, you will be on the front sight when you hear it go click. To do it without that is stupid. I'm not. I don't want you to do this. It's not what I'm asking you to do. What I'm asking you to do is this. See the difference? I'm sighting, I'm triggering, on the way out, pressing, 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 holding my alignment, holding my placement, bang, and the gun goes off. Huge difference. It's about rhythm. It is not about component shooting. Okay? Grip the gun, clear the holster, index, drive it out, sight, trigger, press, bang. Gun goes off just below the pectoral muscle. Oh yeah. You gotta come up, Mrs. Hand, and over. Anytime you're ready, go ahead and just work it out. Couple of easy times. Both hands moving at the same time. Both hands moving at the same time. We can center chest up, over, there you go. A miss is as good as a mile, Lyle, so if you just come up and clear his hand by doing this, you missed it. Okay? You don't have to lift it way up and then down. There you go. Okay, everybody stop for a minute. Back to the holster. No matter where you are, everybody stop, go back to the holster. Face your target. I want you to, with your left hand, extend just like this, like you were holding a longbow. Take your strong hand, and I want you to grab the string, and I want you to pull that string right back to your cheek and aim in. Feel your elbow. Look at it. See how you're tabled out like this? Is any one of you like this? No. None of you have the elbow down. All of you are just like this, okay? That's the exact same mid-draw position we're trying to get to, where the elbow is tabled like this instead of being dropped. As soon as you drop it, the weapon comes out of your line of vision, which means that you can't see the sight earliest possible time, and you can't drive it forward being on the sight. That's the whole idea of leaving the elbow up. Now, initially, you'll have a tendency to overdo it and get it way up. I'm not asking you to do that. All I'm doing is, see what I'm saying? It's just up. It's not down. I'm not letting it collapse. It's up here, tabled, perpendicular to my body. Okay? Without that, you're always going to scoop a little bit. Because the minute I get it up here and drop it, there it goes. Out of my line of vision. Doesn't come up until the last minute. Stabilize, steady, then press. That's not what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to get it up here, bang. Okay? Go back to thinking now, rhythm. Okay, he wanted me to shoot rhythmically too, so he wanted me to draw, up, out, bang, which means you must be triggering, must be sighting on the way to the target, right? So even if you go slow, you're here, that's what I want. On the sight, 
aligned and placed properly. Okay? Go ahead and keep, continue on. Keep trying it. With your partner, arm out. Swap off left and right whenever you feel like it. No pressure. Don't rush. You don't have to do this quickly. Okay, your hammer should be doing what on the way out, Lyle? Absolutely. You should be pressing on the way out. And if anything changed down range, relieve pressure, don't shoot. You're not even near the trigger. Watch me. I'm taking your gun. Okay, got this, and... Okay. I want you to watch the trigger, okay? This is the way you carry it, safe condition. Hammers forward, weapons off safe. The double action is the safety. Any time that you've started to press and, and say, oh, can't shoot, all you're going to do is decock, back to a safe position, but ready to fire. Okay? So now, I draw the weapon, watch the hammer. So I get it up here, I turn it, watch the hammer. What's it doing as I press it forward? Coming back, because I'm on the site and I can start triggering. I'm not doing this. I'm not waiting until I'm out here and then going, Okay, one continuous fluid move. Up. Okay, slow. Go ahead and uh, get it out in your strong hand. Okay. Okay, now, let your hands relax. Keep your thumb off the weapon. Okay, give me your hand. Stay relaxed with it. Okay, now, see how you extended it forward and the thumb is pointed straight down range. Mm -hmm. See how this finger is pointed at the ground? That's exactly the way you want it. Now what you want to do is bring it up, put it on the weapon, and this knuckle right here is what's going to actually marry up with that part of your thumb. Okay, so you lay your hand in there like this, right? This goes right against the frame, right? High on the frame, right there. This hand... No, keep this grip. There you go. There's pointed straight forward. Give me a little bit more hand behind the gun because it's not there you go. Now creep it back incrementally until you have no black showing. No, this hand. Just creep it back. There you go. No black showing. Both thumbs pointed at the target. Gun is totally isolated by left to, rear, left to right pressure here, front to rear pressure here. Trigger finger operates independently. See how, what a complete package that feels like? It's all solid. solid. Yep. When you shoot it, You'll get a little bit of felt recoil, but more you're going to get this, which is much better and easier to control than this thing, you know, hopping around in your hands. You're going to get this. So then shot-to-shot -shot recovery time is much better. I like that. You know what, how I learned to do this over and over again? I would put the mating surfaces together like this and then cam my, thumb, cam my hand. I got used to doing this. Yep. And it was understanding that it's this knuckle not this one, this one, the base of my palm heel that actually goes underneath my thumb. Once you understand that, you say, I got it. You should be able to take your right hand off the gun and still have it very tight. Okay, slow down, slow down. You're just pointing. I know you're not, you can't be on the sights. Easy. Sight, press, sight, press. Take it easy. You're just going wham out there. Folks, look up here for a minute. If I take a knife, okay, and I take this knife and I want to slash this target, wham, and I do this, the same thing that helps me with the knife hurts me with the firearm. At the, at the, at the max extension, that right there, where I extend the arm, that whip at the last little bit when my elbow locks, hyperextends, oh, a little over travel and then back is what makes the knife cut so deep when you slash. But it's also the exact thing we don't want to have happen with a firearm. Why? Yeah, because the whip, that sudden stop, can create a divergence of two inches at the muzzle. That sudden stop, wham, when you throw it out, hyperextension, stop, wong, boom. And if you let it go then, I don't know, man, two inches maybe. Which means at a minimum, you can't shoot quickly because you have to wait, see it, press. What I'm trying to get to you is to go fast and then easy, smooth, easy. Yeah, you're excited. Yeah, it's a gross motor movement. Just put the brakes on a little bit. That's all. Give them the gun, but give it to them on your terms.
what I want to do now is I want to talk a little bit about reloads, okay, because we'll be doing those out there. Um, in a lot of competition, what you'll see is, uh, again, you see the orange magazine, you know that I've got orange rounds in it, okay? You also notice that I have no magazine, no rounds at all in this magazine, okay? There are no live rounds on my person, okay? All right, what I want to do is I want to break away from the tendency to flip guns. A lot of times guys when they're doing competition shooting will flip a gun like this, where their hand, just one hand, opens up and they flip the gun so that the relationship between the length of their thumb and where the magazine releases is changed. Okay, most people's thumb is not long enough to touch that magazine release button and get it to drop, so they have to change their grip in order to press the button. When you see me do it, you won't even really be able to tell me or tell that I didn't flip it. But all I'm doing is this. Could you even tell? No. What I did was I controlled the gun with my off hand. Okay, all I did was I took my weak hand and used the index finger against the trigger guard by extending it and just turning the gun. See it? It's the difference between you losing your weapon under being frightened and under duress and maintaining total control of it. The way this works is real simple. All I do is relax my grip. Just relax the grip with the right hand. Don't give it up. Don't do this. All I'm doing is nose muzzle target, elbow I bring in. I want an index point. Because if someone runs into me on the street or something, I don't want this freewheeling out here. I want it tight and in my body right here. So the first thing I do is bring it right here. Elbows against my hip, known point. Even in confusion. Nose, muzzle, target. I'm looking right over the top of it. When I go to grab this fresh magazine, thumb goes deep behind the magazine. All I'm going to do is regain my grip at this moment and flag my thumb. Magazine comes out. Insert the trailing edge, the back edge first, rock it forward, slam, head up first, follow it with the weapon. A good reload is not, doesn't look fast. It looks just very, very smooth. There's no extra motion. Okay? I'm here. I turn the gun, press the button, bring it in here, look in, bang, and shooting. That is way faster than doing <clears throat> this and wiggling the gun to get the magazine out and looking like a bonehead out there. You don't need to do that. Okay, all you've got to do is be in control and very smooth. Okay, one more time. All I'm doing is relaxing the grip with this hand, relaxing it, and I'm using this. See that? All I'm doing is extending my hand and then bang, pressing against this side of the trigger guard to spin the gun in my hand. It happens that fast, and I never let go of the gun to flip it like this. Never. All I did was open my hand a little bit. Boom, press the button. Nose muzzle target. Initially, you'll have to look. All I'm doing is basically bringing the trailing edge of the magazine into the magazine well. I am not taking my hand off and then slamming it forward. From the trailing edge, rock forward and bring it up. No extra movement. Here, boom. Head always precedes the weapon coming up. You don't want to bring it up as a package like this because you're not prepared to shoot. What you want to do is see it in eyes and intersect eyes and sight and target. Okay? It's a very smooth control movement. Smooth equals fast. Okay? If you get a magazine that's hung up, which Glocks are notorious for if you have the pre-slab um, side magazines, don't worry about it. If you turn it and this thing hangs up for any reason, don't expend a lot of energy, man, on flipping, you know, the current uh, technique now that you see a lot of guys doing is they'll start the magazine out and then they flip it like this. You know, don't do that. Why do I want to do anything extra that may not have the gun back to where I need it? What's the difference if I do this and it hangs up? I come up here, grab it with my finger, drop it out, bring it up. It's all controlled. I know where all the pieces are. Why get excited? You're not going to be doing this, hopefully, under uh, no cover. If you need to reload, what's the right answer? Like, moved cover. Do it behind a car. Do it behind a wall. Do it behind something. If you're doing it with no cover, you're going to be doing it while you're moving, <laughs> you know, because you got a dead gun, so you're going to be like doing one of these things, and you better be able to use that as to help uh, the person not engage you, all right? So again, relax the hand, turn just like this, elbow goes to hip, nose muzzle target, bang, retain this, I've already got my fresh grip, a quick eye until you get the uh, motor memory to remember this, without removing the base plate from the heel, bang, rock it forward and bring it up and fire, okay? Okay, all you're going to do is basically just turn it, and you're already moving, okay? From here, 
See how it changed the angle? Yeah. Now regain, grab, see it in, boom, eyes up, and press. Okay? Okay, from here. Just try getting it out a little bit faster. So all I want you to do is relax the hand bank. Okay? Now folks, a variation on that, some law enforcement uh, organizations do not want you to release your magazine. Go ahead, back to the holster. Do not want you to release the magazine that you know you have in the weapon until you've retained the fresh one, and that's okay. In other words, if I've drawn the weapon, I've been shooting and all that business, okay? And now I'm to this point right here, and I turn it, but I don't press until I got this magazine, and I do that, that's fine. Okay? That's fine. But now I've got the gun set up in the position. It's turned, my thumb's on the button. I got the fresh magazine hit, boom, and put it in. That's fine. Either or, you know? I mean, most of the time things are happening so fast where I've got the gun spun that it's like in air or whatever when I'm coming back with the fresh one because my movements are, you know, my hands are used to doing that. It's, I don't stutter or leave two hands up here. As soon as I turn the gun, this hand's gone. New magazine, boom, put it back in, okay? So give it a try. Try that now a couple of times where basically you turn the gun, don't hit the button until you, hand, you get your hand on this magazine. Then, boom, and in, and shoot. Give that a try. You can do it with the finger as well. Okay, with the 99, you can also straighten your trigger finger and do it with the index finger. I mean, the middle finger. Okay, it's up to you. But turn the gun like this, that's how you're going to have it twisted in your grip. See that? It's not going to stay here where I'm fighting it or trying to do it like this. I'm actually turning the gun. Okay, one problem that you're going to have because this is a small framed uh, weapon is that when you turn it, see the meat of my hand? When I hit that? Yeah, keep pinching it too. Yeah, yeah, when you put it back in. Okay, so you're just going to have to be mindful of that. Let me see what you got, man. Okay, don't train yourself to do that. Start with the gun out and then do the drill. I don't want you to get used to thinking you're going to draw, hit the button, and then reload. So don't don't put them together. You'll, you'll, you'll have it out. Yeah, you will have been shooting and run out. So now it's time to reload. I don't want you to think, because I don't want you under duress, to put it out there, hit the button, and go, what am I doing? I should be shooting. Okay. Okay? So just hold it out there, take a pause, then do the drill. How much extra movement do you have? No, that, and then you didn't know whether to whack it or whatever. Same thing every time. If you're going to use that, use that. If you're going to use a finger, use that. But don't go, well, I can do a bunch of things. Because typically guys forget where their muzzle is and they start doing all this stuff. Me, I always jet it down. From here, I'll, I have a tendency to do that. Just wham, straight down like that. If it doesn't come out, I always use a finger. That way I'm not wiggling, my muzzle's not loose. You know what I mean? So just try to contain yourself to, okay, what do I prefer? And then that's the way you go. You know, that way you'll always do the same thing and it becomes the motor memory thing to center on, okay? Okay, what we'll be doing on this is you'll have to take some, uh, uh, we can basically uh, do this with, I guess, uh, just the magazine with the rounds, because there has to be rounds in the magazine. So there has to be safety rounds in the magazine, okay? No live rounds, no, no, no. Bad thing, bad thing. Okay, what we're going to do is basically start with the magazine unseated, and what I want you to do is you'll have the weapon so that you've got a, li I mean a uh, training round loaded in the chamber. Okay, all orange, check it, bring it back, look in there, okay, orange, make sure that's loaded, check the base, good, okay, I know I'm orange. All I want you to do is basically press out, and I want you to aim in and press the trigger, you're going to hear that, which means a failure to fire, which means it could be any number of things. The way to fix that is basically going to bring it to a midpoint. All I'm going to do is basically bring, drop my elbow slightly, here, tap, roll it, rack, and action, okay? So all I'm doing is from here,
slightly down, that's all. All I'm doing is bringing my elbow down slightly, bending it. Nose muzzle target, from a position of power, tap the uh, magazine into the well, rotate the gun, rack the action, and let it go. Don't ride it back. And then up and fire. We're not doing Israeli slingshot. We're not doing this, because I defy anyone to show me that they don't have a whip on the end of that stroke, okay? You know what that is. That's like, wow! Okay, and we're also not riding the slide home. I'm not doing this. Pull it back to full spring compression, recoil spring compression, and bang, let it go without letting this go crazy. You don't have to. If I'm here, I turn it over, just release it like that and back up. Sometimes these gur up in the, in the weapon and they're soft like uh, plastic, obviously. Okay, so again, we're here, nothing here. See, the gun didn't move. My hand did, but the gun didn't. If I move the gun and my hand, what do I got going back up to my target? A mess. Okay, so it's a, a tight, confined motion. Tap, roll it, rack, and back up on target. Okay, all here. It's all here. Okay, it doesn't need to be <laughs> like this, okay, or anything. It's just all nice and tight right here. Any questions? Tap the magazine, rotate it, rack the action, release, and two-hand grip, back up, and aim in. Okay? Two-handed. Mm -hmm. You have a problem. You just your hand doesn't go back down. It's just from right. Yeah, it, fr from here. Because that's powerful. Okay, more powerful than this. That's not ergonomic. Okay, nor is this. So all we're doing is just a slight twist. Bang. Then turn it like this. Pull and release. Rotate it back. Good draw, Lyle. That's all right. Good draw. That's it. Nice. Nicely done. Okay. Any questions about what we covered today? Obviously, different levels of experience. Um, as the excitement picks up and action, you know, picks up on the range, people have a tendency to degenerate and they stop thinking about individual movements. This is training. Nobody is evaluating you until the end of the end. We're going to do an index shoot tomorrow, but it's not an evaluation. It's to put you somewhere so we can say, okay, this is where he is accuracy-wise, etc. At the end of the week, we will test you, but that's for the standards, and that only tells you based on our standard where you fall. Nothing more, nothing less. This is futile to try to put a guy in a race car and go 180 miles an hour before he's driven at 25 miles an hour. You gotta go slow to go fast. So I guarantee you, if you go slowly in the beginning, you will be smoking at the end of the week. If you try to go too fast early, you will suck at the end of the week because your skills aren't being brought along. You know what I mean? So dumb it down, go slow, think it through, regardless of what's going on. You know, hurry up, got to have somebody shoot him, come on, hurry up. It's noise. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep going. Boom. Because you know what? A three-second hit is a hell of a lot better than a one-second miss and always will be. You know, good combat shots hit what they're aiming at. Regardless of the circumstance, noise, environmental situations, weapon, doesn't matter. When they point it out, they're going to hit it. And that's the thing that's spooky about them. Uh, our idea and our goal here is to send you away pleased, pleased at your level of expertise, okay? Uh, not necessarily pleased with how the lunch was or, you know, all that stuff. We hopefully you like that too, but the bottom line is, is this is for you, and, and we would be negligent if we let you leave here without being more proficient than when you came. So there's a, you know, very structured way we get there, and that's what we're going through now. start off with basically the three yard one-handed shooting okay I will load you on my command you'll follow my commands 
Once we're done, all we're going to do is have a cover garment on, like you would wear on the street. It can either break at the front or not, but I want the weapon concealed. If it is one that covers the weapon, then obviously your draw has to be slightly different. You're going to have to lift, draw, and then do your engagement, okay? Um, or you can say, well, I want to test without my cover garment. It's up to you. So the gun is either out or it's covered and you function the gun that way. You understand what I'm saying? So you, you might want to open the front of your coat so you can open the coat and get it out. Okay, I understand it's a little bit chilly, but you know, you gotta, we gotta work with conditions here. All I'm trying to do is, I will use an assault cue that sounds like this. Do not shoot, nobody shoot. That's all you're gonna hear. When you hear that, as safely as you can, all I want you to do is one hand, one shot as safely as you can. So I don't want anyone trying to beat the clock when they're not prepared to do that. You learned the function yesterday, all you're gonna do is a three finger grip and you can either stand in place and extend the hand, look at the target and fire one round, look at the target again, okay, bring it back, trigger finger straight, decock if your weapon is so uh, configured and then return to the holster. Okay, gentlemen, if you would, go ahead and take out a magazine. It's fully loaded. Retrieve your handgun from the holster. Lock, load, and press check. Okay, you insert the magazine, working hand out the pistol, keeping your finger clear of the trigger. Pull the action to the rear and let around chamber. Then check it. To check it, reach underneath the weapon with your fingers, thumb, and index finger. Slightly pull the slide to the rear, keeping your finger clear of the trigger. I'll demonstrate. Look down, center range, without moving your weapon. Under the gun, just like this, thumb and finger, pull slightly to the rear, you see brass, good. Decock and back to the holster, okay? Go ahead and check on them. Once you've done that, excellent. Decock, back to the holster. All right, gentlemen, I explained the drill already, okay? All we're gonna do is at the tunnel as safely as you can. One hand, one round, confirm it. And then back to the holster, this one there. Everyone understand drill, give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, okay good deal, stand by. Safely. All right, gentlemen, stand by, same thing. These are mulligans, don't be nervous. Shooting is fun, except for the person being shot, stand by. Back to the index point, decock, trigger finger straight, and back to the holster. Same drill again, stand by. Okay, what we're going to do now is going to do the same thing. One hand going only as fast as you feel safe, but this time, when you draw the weapon, I want you to step forward like we did yesterday, aggressively. One hand, one shot, looking at the target. Do not use your sights, okay? Do not use your sights. One hand, one shot, center mass, and then back to the index point. Decock, you need to reholster and regain a safe position. Everybody understand? Give me a thumbs up. Excellent. Stand by. Stay on your way out. Here you go. Head back to the index point. Nicely done. Decock, decock, knee to, back to the Stand by. Lever down, lever down. Back to the index position. Back to the knee to, back to the index position. If you do this drill, how I want you to end up is, I want you to end up here in a disciplined position and hold. And then come back when I give you the cue. I don't want you to go, boom, I'm done. Because you will train yourself to do that. You will train yourself to go, boom, I'm done. No, you're not. You're not done until you get effect. So once the weapon is out, bang, you shot it like this, then hold. And then I'm going to give you the command, bring it back, and decock. You need to back to the holster. You understand? The discipline position, no mental size. Stand by. And back to the index position, much better, much better. Okay, gentlemen, if you would, go ahead and step back to the seven yard line. All right, now listen carefully, listen carefully. Without removing the weapon from the holster, 
I want you to use your thumb, touch the magazine release button, take that magazine out, insert a fresh one, and return the magazine that you took out of the weapon to a pocket, not to the magazine carrier. Okay, everybody understand? Go ahead and make it happen. Touch your thumb to the magazine release button, right there, right? The magazine will come out. Just pop it out. Right there. Okay, put a fresh magazine there. Another magazine board, put it back it. in the magazine pocket, the full one. What you just did is called an administrative reload. When I tell you to do an admin reload, that's what I mean. The weapon's in the holster, you thumb the magazine, release, take it out, reach over, put a fresh one in. Do not return a questionable magazine back to your pouch. Put it in your back pocket. Only fully loaded magazines belong in your magazine pouch. Everybody understand? Operationally and tactically. On the range. Okay, stand by. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do a drill where we take a step, draw two-handed with the grip we showed you yesterday, fire one round, not two, because we're going to just concern. I want you to get your head around this motion, and then hold, hit the back of the index point, decock, three holster. So it'll look like this. You're standing on the line. I'm going to make your hands do one, two, three, and four. And all you got to do is when you get the tone, step, draw, shoot, one round, confirm, and then back here to the holster, done. Two things. Number one, if you shoot one round, because we are using the sights now at seven yards, how many sight pictures should you get? Two. The one you shoot and the one you confirm. So don't think you just shoot and then look at your target. That's not what you do. You shoot and then follow through. The gun recoils, look at the front sight again. You might even take up a little pressure on the trigger and ask yourself, could I make that next shot? Only then. Relax, look at your target if you want to, and come back to the index point. Decock, boom, into the holster. This is aim, fire, two-handed grip like we showed you, leading thumbs. Okay? Everybody understand? Nice and slow, take your time. I want your best aim rounds. If it is questionable, sight alignment and sight picture, do not press the trigger. I want your best aimed round. Clear? Okay, good deal. All right, stand by. Nice and slow, guys. Nice and slow. As fast as you can go, safely. Do not, don't be in a hurry, guys, to reholster. Do not be in a hurry to reholster. Be in a hurry to get the weapon out, but don't be in a hurry to put it away. It may not be done. Stand by. Good group, Mike. Decock at the index point and reholster. All right, all we're going to do here is basically uh, work a clock angle, and this is very simple. I want you to listen carefully, okay? We don't want to muzzle flash anybody. We don't want to do anything crazy. All we're doing is, again, testing your accuracy more than anything at 10 yards. I'm going to make you face left. You're going to face left like this, and when I give you the tone, all I want you to do is move your head and eyes first. And then turn, draw, and shoot. Where do you draw? Straight to the target. Do not draw like this and then turn. What did I just do? Muzzle flashed everybody. All I want to do is turn my head and then turn and draw straight to the target. Stay in that disciplined position. Return the weapon to the holster while you're facing down range and stand by for your next command, which might be to face left or right. Who knows, okay? So do not turn, shoot, and then kind of wander with the gun and look for what the next command is. Discipline position, back to the holster, boom, and stand by. Everyone understand? Movement means nothing. Shooting means everything. Okay? Stand by, face to your left. Weapons are presented directly downrange. I'll tell that. Okay, stand by. Everybody stop, look at your thumbs. Where are they? Is it the grip we showed you? Are you controlling your recoil? Did you follow through and ask yourself, could I make the next shot? If you didn't, you were wrong, okay? Back to the index point, decock. Invert the weapon, back to the holster. Stand by, face to your right. Once you are holstered, face to your right. Look to your right. All right, there you go. All right, head and eyes first. If I heard a gunshot on the street, I've sat my eyes like this and I see that I am totally not involved. Would I produce the gun? Because there's gunfire going on? No, man, because the minute I put a gun out like this, even if I wasn't involved, I am now. Because if you see me, you don't know who I am. Am I a buddy of the guys that are in it? 
You see, that's why, look first. If it's not for you, screw. Get out of here. Okay? Use your brain. If it's not for you, it ain't your shooting. Stand by. Head and eyes first, turn into it, draw straight to the target. Okay, face to your left. To your left. Stand by. Same drill. Best aim rounds, guys. Best aim rounds. Do not trigger if it is not your best round. Nice, Mike. Again. Stand by. Reach down and touch toes. Reach down and touch toes. Not, not too fast. Shoot! 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 Gentlemen, back to the holster. All right, gentlemen, all we're going to do is on the tone, nice and easy, as fast as you can safely. I want you to fire, draw and fire at the tone, two rounds at 15 yards. Two hands, two rounds, well aimed fire. Do not look at your target between shots. Do not look at your target between shots. It's not going to help you. You won't see the hole. All right, everybody understand your thumbs up? Stand by. And go ahead and bring it back to the index point, t cock if you're equipped that way, and reholster. Alright, same drill, gentlemen. Nice, easy, well aimed fire. Now that you're firing two rounds, how many sight pictures we got? Three, right? The two you shoot, the one you confirm. Give me a jack thing. Weak hand across the stomach, strong hand under the chin. Stand by. Bring back to the index point, e you need to, and back to the holster. All right, in strong position number four. Hands up, palms out. Looking at him like you're chilling him out, calming him down. Stand by. You can make the shot at short distance, you can make the shot at long distance. All you've got to do is make sure you've got an independent operating trigger finger. And then once you've got alignment, that you don't disturb alignment and placement by trigger pressure. At this range, guys, all we're going to do is draw the weapon, and we're not going to do any draws and shooting. I want you to draw the weapon on my command. We'll go to a low ready. You'll take the weapon up at your leisure. Aim in and well sighted, well aimed and controlled rounds. Bang, shoot one round. Straight trigger finger, bring it down to the 45 degree angle, rest. Bring it back up when you're ready, two hands. Press the trigger without disturbing alignment and picture. Bang, gun goes off, straight finger, back. I don't care if you take five minutes. I just want five rounds at 25 yards on the paper, okay? No stress, no pressure, all right? Okay, guys, go ahead if you will, and draw your weapon. Draw your weapon. Both hands on the weapon, and just relax, relax. All right, the line is hot. When you have finished firing five rounds, rest in between, you can go back to the holster and stand by after decocking if you need to. Does everybody understand? Give me a head nod. All right, gentlemen, the line is hot at your leisure. Five rounds, 25 yards, take your time. Have fun. Now bring it down and rest. Just relax. Look down at the gravel. When you're ready, take a deep breath, bring it up. Off the paper mark. See the mark will allow everything off the paper mark. All we're doing is marking what's on the cardboard, gentlemen. We're going to cover up the paper, okay? Mark everything on the cardboard. Mark everything on the cardboard. Nothing else you're not worried about. All right, now consider the number of rounds that you fired and look at how many are in the thoracic cavity and think about how fast you went. 
Everyone got room for improvement? Of course, we all have room for improvement all the time. All right, all the time. I want you to remember these groups because this is the last time you're gonna fucking shoot those ragged ass groups like you got there. Okay, we're gonna have increasing, increasing proficiency. Shooting is easy. Never, never need to find it necessary to transfer your firearm from your strong hand to your weak hand. Unless you've been hurt. You know what I mean? But to just do it as a matter of convenience so your strong hand can do something, it's not how it works. You can return your weapon in a correct condition back to the holster and use your strong hand or you can figure out how to do it with your weak hand but to just put it in my left hand and hold it like it wasn't meant to be fired don't put that on your disc all right so I'm never gonna have a situation where I've been shooting you see the orange okay everyone sees that you see the orange round you know it's safe okay okay I'm never gonna take a situation where I do this why would I do that why do I want that on my disc I don't okay if it's here and I need to do something with my strong hand, I got a couple of options, okay? I can make it a drill and put it in my weak hand like we're going to teach you later. Uh, and you can put it between your legs like this, catch it with your knees, put it in your weak hand and then do something. I'm not a big fan of doing all of this stuff, okay? I'm not a big fan of that. There is no reason for you to ever have to do this, okay, tactically. It just doesn't happen. Okay, if I need to do a weak hand draw, okay, then I can do a weak hand draw and pull it out without the other hand at all. And I can do all my functioning from here. I can reload, boom, put that in. I can use my sight as my other hand, but there's none of this handgun walking fingers around. That's all poor weapons handling. Okay, you always operate it and handle it like you mean it. Okay, the second thing is mental intensity. Some guys are just kind of leaning back like this and they're kind of, you know, shooting like this. If I was just shooting that plate over there and we were target shooting, I mean, I wouldn't even shoot it like that, you know what I mean? But that's okay. If you're just playing with the 22, I guess, with your kids, fine. This is fighting. So what do we want? We want an aggressive forward mentality, and that comes out of your body, okay? You don't shoot tactically like this. Number one, in almost everybody's understanding, when the first shot goes down range, what do you think you do? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Whoa, you get down. So you're not going to find yourself upright and doing like this, leaning back. Even with a handgun, as piss and a caliber as it is, it will have a tendency to push you back and you see toes come up, like this, which is dumb for a 9mm or a 45 or a 10mm. I mean, give it to them, man. Stay on balance. You know, this is intense, okay? So you got to get kind of in intense in that manner. The mental side, once you shot, it ain't over. So you, we don't want to train ourselves to go, boom. Because the more repetitions that you do like that, boom, boom, that becomes your reality. That's your normalcy. So now you get in this shit somewhere, what do you think you're likely to do? Boom, boom. You leave it up there. So you want to come up, bang, shoot, look through. Could I see it again? Can I see? Can I make that shot? And then might drop it and then look left to right with the weapon. What's going on? Sometimes people take a quick look behind them. What's going on behind me? And then go back here. But you are mentally in the game. You gotta visualize it. You know, that's the breakdown, whether it's in the dojo, on the mat, in a karate studio, whether it's combatives on the mat, in a cage, whether it's out here on the range. If you can't see yourself doing this in the real world of work, you gotta go home. Because what are you here for? So you gotta stay in the game, you know what I'm saying? Intense, you're there, okay, I understand. I just shot somebody. He may have a friend, they may come up, I gotta be ready to shoot that person or at that person while I back up and get away and I'm gonna be doing this. Yeah, that's reality, okay? So you gotta get in the game. Okay, and lastly, just understanding the way the weapon works, okay, where your grip is. You control your grip, so you know the grip. We showed it to you yesterday. You operate the weapons and have the leading thumbs just like this, okay? You know that this knuckle of the back of your palm heel should be at the hinge point of your thumb, just like this. You know, it's not the single shot shooter that is impressive because virtually anybody can get everything lined up, hold it, and press and get that one round where it needs to go and then totally break composure. It's the multiple shot shooter on perhaps multiple targets that's impressive because he can gain and maintain concentration and focus on what the business is throughout the event and then he can cut it off. So you gotta be prepared to shoot multiple. What if you had to shoot three rounds? What if you had to pull it out? He's a big mean bastard. Not that you're a mean guy, but he's a big mean bastard like him, right? And I'm shooting while I'm backing up, man, because he's scaring me. 
and I'm going boom, 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 and he's still coming. Well, what if in training I'm always used to going boom? But he's still coming. I mean, he doesn't even know he got shot. He's all cracked out or whatever. He's still coming at me. Dude, you got to be ready. Boom, 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 boom. And, he's, and, and as he falls, track him right down. He's on the ground. Boom, boom. Put another one there. I'm in this until it's over. See what I'm saying? One round, no guarantee of anything. I don't care if you're shooting an elephant gun. Okay? So again, different levels, good diversity. And actually what we're going to show on this videotape is in fact that. Hopefully by Friday we'll get everybody kind of parity going on. Your handling will improve, your understanding will improve, your tactical movements will improve, the way you operate with the gun. So the intent is to show the moderately trained man from all walks of life, wide diversity, and show him day one, day two, day three, day four, day, day five, and show him an increasing arc like this until we all reach some kind of level or plateau of better uh, skill usage. Okay? So stay in the game here. Don't go south on me yet, because it's going to be a long week if we do that. I need your best out of each round, and I need you to be with me mentally. You put this in your hand, that's serious shit. Not to be taken cavalier, not to be flippant, not to be kind of lackluster, you know? This is about putting somebody on their ass who meant to do it to you.